Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the counselor's office. Ah, Mr. Gaming Counselor, we've been taking a break from Destiny and talking about the Ds. We're going to go with Diablo 4, and I've been very interested in some opinions about Diablo 4. I mean, I've really enjoyed it when it first came out. Season 1 was a joke. Season 2 was like, okay, we're getting back, and then Season 3 was, uh, we're back to being a joke again. So... I I want to choose one of these videos, and I need to watch one of his videos. Last time I watched an Asmongold clip, people are like, you don't know who he is? No, but I need to do a video because one's going to get views, and two, people actually for some reason care that I don't know who they are. But I'm going to choose uh, the last chance because that piques my interest. Diablo 4 has had a critical point in its development. There is oh. no secret that since the launch of the game... I've had so many people complain about my hair. Like it being long, this guy has longer hair than I do, and there's nothing wrong with that, man. Rock the hair, but I don't want to hear anyone ever <laughs> talk about my hair again. The game in June, Diablo 4 has had a roller coaster of a reception. In fact, I think it looks something like this the game okay. originally came out to reception that was fairly yeah. high until it dawned upon everyone, myself and Okay, that is the Halo theme. I was wondering, like, I just did a video on Halo, and I was like, why am I hearing that? So, yes, I'm going to, I don't know, like, how uh, how exactly I uh, I feel about this graph. But, yes, I would agree the hot, it was very high when it came out. Yeah, like, Megan Fox with her tatas out. People were like, oh, my God, Megan Fox and her tatas. And everyone was, like, excited about the game. Uh, and I bought the game because I played Diablo 3 toward the end. So, obviously, I was there for all the hot mess that apparently happened with it. But at the end, like, I thought it was okay. So, I was like, you know, I'll, I'll, I will participate in Diablo 4 for the first time. Experience it at launch. Uh, and I thought I got my money's worth from the campaign. It was a very good campaign. The story was good. And then the end game was, uh, well, there wasn't really one. Which I was like, okay. But I will say that season two came out, and uh, it, I'm assuming that's what this is, is season two. And I feel like I played enough of season two. I got to 100. I mean, I didn't fight Uber Lilith again. Like, I already beat Uber Lilith in season one. Uh, because, I mean, w there's no real point to fight her again, because you don't get anything besides the horse. And I already got the horse and the title. So it's like, what's the point of fighting Uber Lilith if she doesn't actually give you anything new? Uh, which is another problem with the endgame. Included that there is core fundamental parts of the game that are not fully realized. For instance, yeah. itemization would be one of these. We also have a lack of an end game loop. Exactly. That was very exciting. So the reception started to go downhill until it hit a point right here where they decided to, in pre season one, nerf everyone. My power God. That was very poorly received. This may I remember them coming out and doing, doing like a. Didn't they do like a, a live stream and talk about all the nerfs? And they were like, yeah, we're going to do all the nerfs. You okay with that? We're doing like, what? And I remember because I was playing uh, Rogue. I, I was playing Rogue and they were like nerfing a bunch of stuff. And then I was like wondering if I was going to try something else. And they nerfed like a lot of builds and people are like, well, this is unplayable now. I'm like, oh, well, then I, I best not try to play anything else because... If they're nerfing everything else worse than Rogue, then I might as well just stick with Rogue, because Rogue at, at launch was, like, one of the best things. Outside of, I think, Barbarian, a lot of people were talking about. But Barbarian got the got some hefty nerfs. Made players feel not only like there's a lack of things to do, but when they logged into their completed characters, they felt even worse than they did the day before. This plummeted the reception until Season 1 was launched, and people originally had something to do. There was an apology going with it, saying that, nerfs don't worry we're not going to do these major nerfs again they apologize for it people seem to accept that apology and it was pretty bad they released it was almost comical they released the patch and immediately there was a crap storm and they did a emergency live stream and they're like please don't go away <laughs> we're gonna make things better and granted they did do a lot of buffs, and they learned their lesson that they would do buffs with nerfs, or that they would 
buff other things before they nerf things into the ground, which I don't know why it's so hard for game developers to understand. If you nerf the fun and you don't add something else that's equally as fun, there's no fun left. I, I, I just... And then people once again realize that season one is just malignant tunnels, a few legendary powers, and the reception started going downhill again. It was very now, boring. We did have Diablo 4, in my opinion's biggest W so far has been season two. That is what this is right here, where they had a good season. Not only did they add into season two things to do, so we had like the blood tide, which was a good leveling experience, actually brought players together in. I think the blood tide is should have replaced honestly uh the I forgot what the activity is the the other zone blood tide was much funner and way cooler and interactive in my opinion I enjoyed that I also enjoyed the 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 vampire perks they were really fun they added some broken powers but it also wasn't like absurdly the problem with million hearts is that it really highlighted the issue of no Base. and i found out on twitter people were like posting memes of the poor the poor guy that was like being honest with everyone that the reason why they wouldn't add more stash tabs is that when a player loads up into a public space or into like the town it loads everyone else stash. i i'm no technical genius i'm no dev and i've not been like really into the Diablo and like Path of Exile, Lost Epoch, all those different game types. I've never been like really heavily into it, but I can tell you that is probably the stupidest thing that they probably could ever do and I've ever heard. And I think most people agreed. <laughs> and it's obvious this guy wanted, had something on his chest. He really wanted to get out. Like, I feel like he was that guy at the company. He's like, yeah, let's, let, no, why are we doing this? Why? 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 Why is that a thing? Like, I can imagine in Destiny 2, it, we, the reason we couldn't have more vault space is because we load up everyone else's guns in our inventory or something like that. Like, what? Uh, it's just, it's really stupid. So, I can imagine most people were way happier with the vampire perks because it has its own little place where all the stuff was stored, so it had nothing to do with your own personal space. And the Blood Tide had decent loot associated with the Blood Tide, but you also had powers that came, like a seasonal mechanic, which the vampire powers were very well received. You got sort yep. of that power fantasy back. It was really cool. With the pre-season nerfs here. So people started- I did a Necromancer, and it was just really fun. Like, I have never did Necromancer when it was, like, good in season one, but season one was like- Pfft. But Necromancer in season two was really fun strong again and on top of it they added new bosses into the game that was great you had uber durio I did it i beat uber durio farm because now ubers are an option but then people really my biggest problem though with like like there's all these different bosses but there's only one uber and that uber was a joke compared to lilith and i still didn't get any uber uniques and i farmed and it was it was it was really disappointing i was like well i'm i'm spent but I really hated how hard, let not say hard, but how gruesome it was to get the materials for some of those bosses. And it's, they, it just sucked. It really just, the experience still sucks. I feel like it, you, you, if you spend the time, you should get more materials. So that way you're grinding more of those bosses because that's the end game. I don't want to have to keep doing the same dungeons or the specific thing over and over and over and over again just to have a shot at farming a boss to then get the uber or the exo uh the legendary piece that i wanted or unique should i say and then i can make my build then i can go back into doing just dungeons because then i honestly i want to keep going against the bosses and i wish that there was some of these basic bosses there was an uber option that were maybe harder than Duriel. And that they have a higher chance. So you'd go to these base bosses, get your uniques, then challenge Duriel, get some Ubers, and then take on the uh, Uber, Uber versions of these base bosses. So you're like ping ponging around, and then you have a reason to continue grinding. At the end of it, I was like, I'd spent all my materials. I had like 
beaten the game. I got to level 100. I was like, well, I'm just, there's nothing to do. So I'm, I'm done. Realize, wait a minute, Uber Durio actually isn't fun to farm. The it's not. The loop here is just farming materials and things. It's boring. Like Hell Tides, which was another poor reception in terms of, okay, you get to the end game, and now the end game loop is farming materials to be yeah, held by those sucks. materials in order to do the boss. So we had it, an it really initial sucks. spike of, this is fun, and then the end game loop started I'm there. boring again as people got pigeonholed into just farming. And then we had the release of season three, oh my which God. was yes. probably the most poor reception of it any looks so boring. seen in Diablo 4. It looks boring. Point, and that was by the same team that had made season one. They actually have teams that we... That explains everything. I did not even know that. Season one was so freaking boring. And it makes sense. Because season three, you have like a con construct, like a little minion. And if you've ever played Diablo 4, minion builds generally suck. Or, or very boring. But mostly they suck. Leapfrog each other. So season one makes one, three, five, etc. And the team that made season two is making four, six, eight, et cetera. So season three had some poor reception. And they realized that they needed to change things based upon the feedback. They added some changes to the patch in terms of rewards and the mechanics of the vaults. And they changed the pet up a little bit. This seemed to be better, well received. And then Gauntlet at least gave you something to do and sort of flatlined it. Now you're going to look at this. Okay. And, okay. What is this giant spike up in terms of reception? Yeah, what about this? By the players. Well, this is the potential. We are currently oh. right here, ladies and gentlemen. In also, by the way, uh, I'm not saying fire the team that's making all this trash that, that no one likes, but you might take them and push them somewhere else in the company because they have no business making. They have, they have strike one, shame on you. Strike two, Shame on us. There should be no strike three. Like this, this is just like they have shown time and time again. They should not be making any seasons for Diablo because this team had it right. And then instantly we went down to the crapper in the timeline. This is where we are right now. And that is because we're in the they dark side that the most requested change in all of Diablo four is about to be revealed. If you look what? here, it says tune into our next campfire chat. The public Ooh, test realm reveal March 20th. This is March I'll watch 20th it. at 11 a.m. Pacific. All of the major dudes from the campfire chats are going to be there. Oh, I know in Adam order Fletcher. To detail the massive itemization Ooh. changes coming to season four they will discuss affixes item stats the codex of power okay. and the new in-game systems that will change the way you slay and loot across both the seasonal and eternal realms i just do want i do want to mention it one thing that also that i hate about diablo and i know it's probably something that's always happened there's two different two different servers there's the or sections there's eternal and then there's seasonal. Eternal is like all your old characters, and it's just, it gets none of the seasonal benefits. And then you have the seasonal, which is like the new stuff. I hate that there really is no reason to ever go to the eternal region. There just doesn't. Unless you want to skip a season and just play Diablo to play Diablo, but like, why would I waste my time on an old character grinding loot when I'm missing out on like the seasonal mechanics? I just personally to me, it's like it's it's better to just keep to keep going forward and not backwards. I, I just personally, that's me. Maybe you get access to the gauntlet or whatever leaderboards that they have going on. But personally, I feel like the eternal server just is pointless. I'd rather just delete my characters and restart again because you keep buffing and nerfing things anyway, so you're by the time you go back, your old build's already obsolete, so you have to refarm it. But why refarm it? We can just make a new character with the seasonal stuff. Just none of it matters. It's a game at the end of the day, right? But it just—I've never played a game where I farm for a, a build up a character and then it's instantly made useless the next season. Itemization and in-game have easily been the two most, I would say, controversial, but really everyone agrees. It's the most discussed 
point in the game at the moment. There's the meme of damage on Tuesdays because the affixes don't feel good to acquire. No, so a lot of them are trash. In which the loot that you get never actually makes you excited. No. And because they were able to salvage the season three after the very harsh feedback came in quickly all over the place, they have now decided that what they're also going to be doing is putting these changes onto a public test round. They're going Ooh. to discuss how to access our first public test round in Diablo 4 available to people. PC Battle.net users. Yeah! This PTR allows you to get your first taste of the changes coming to season four. We'll listen closely to your feedback to make Maybe adjustments I'll try before that. the season arrives for all. They're basically doing this to avoid another season three fiasco of horrible negativity coming out from the beginning because yeah. it's a pretty negative launch in order to make the game better. They're just going to have us look at it, see if there's feedback. It's so they're having seasonal betas. That I, you, a lot of people want to like trash them for that, but that's really smart. I'm not going to lie. That is probably one of the smartest things you could do. Especially for a live service. I wish more games did that. In fact, uh, I believe, if I'm mis not mistaken, that Rainbow Six Siege has those beta servers where people try, try changes ahead of time. Like, that's, it's really smart. And more games are live service should be should be doing this. Like, I don't understand why Bungie for Destiny 2 refuses to do anything outsourcing for other people like gamers could try like a server to see what it, what it's like to get feedback. Instead, they just rather hit, let everything hit the pan and hope for the best. Back that needs to be sent, etc. Before the season even launches. Now, while the PTR is cool. I do believe that it took them quite a long time. I mean, the game's been out since June, and very quickly after that, people started to send the feedback about itemizations. It took them that long in order to get the itemization changes ready to present. So It's crazy. It's not actually been a year, but it feels like Diablo 4 has been out a year. It's crazy. I'm about to be on summer break, and that that's the time that Diablo 4 came out. That's crazy with feedback sent unless it's minor tweaks i doubt we're seeing an entire re overhaul of this so at this point what we see is probably pretty close to what we're going to get with some minor tweaks most likely much how like when we saw season three they were able to make it feel more enjoyable just by upping the loot uh changing the pearl quantity etc we didn't actually change the entire fundamentals of the vaults. They just made them feel more enjoyable. I'm assuming that the feedback sent about the itemization changes will follow some similar regard. Now you might say, okay, DM, but remember here, after the launch of Diablo 4, you said that there were two major issues. There was core fundamentals about itemization that was lacking, yep. but there was a core in-game gameplay loop that was lacking. And the Uber Duria, while being fun, eventually got boring. So Lilith is boring like there's zero reason to do you beat Lilith one time pat yourself on the back for beating a boss that has the crappiest mechanics it lilith is god awful trash i've never played something that requires you to have to be invincible to to avoid or maneuver some of their base mechanics because it is just god awful i'm so glad i beat her and then got the horse and flipped her the bird so the best case scenario is not only do we see itemization changes, but we see some in-game addition or changes as well. Now, for me personally, no matter how many D4 bad videos you may see that we all laugh at, I do actually believe there is a significant amount of people that want Diablo 4 to be good. Yeah. I myself am that way, and I've said this many yeah. times, that I hope the game is good because I have a YouTube channel that covers it. I also live stream I want, the game. I want Diablo 4 to be successful like better because i really enjoyed the summer where i played it a lot and i was able to escape destiny as well i'm not going to play it when i don't like it but i would hopefully like it in the future so i myself have hopium copium whatever you want to call it yep for the itemization changes that will be quite good and i have a feeling that a large amount of people that watch this feel the same way i don't think people are actually out there rooting for diablo 4 to go to the ground so they can be like yeah it's now i don't think anyone actually spends 80 dollars and hoping for it to crash and burn what i do hope is that we put less you know 60 50 dollar cosmetics in the store and we start putting some of the stuff in the game itself cosmetic wise and that the value proposition is better in the store in general because my god Officially only has 52 players left or what have you. I think the game legitimately has people 
who want to log in and play it but feel like they currently cannot make a fun game i will log in play not enjoy it so because those people exist i think diablo 4 has one last chance if they show some really good changes to the feedback that have been sent basically since the launch of the game they have a chance to bring some of those players back in at a minimum to try it or at least yeah. to get into ptr and see what they think and i've yet to install diablo 4 yet 20 30 minutes to try it they might actually end up enjoying it if they execute it well oh, i'll and play sorceress it, bring me back maybe stick around to see what season four has to offer outside of just itemization changes and if that goes well those people might be interested in buying their expansion pack and the only reason i say that is because the stance I have had on the expansion for Diablo 4 is one and the same. I'm not willing to give more money to a no. product that I feel the core fundamental product is flawed. I'm not gonna buy a turbo kit for a car that has an engine that is already has problems with it. So they need to fix the core fundamentals of the game first. This has always been my opinion. And if they do so, they might bring enough goodwill back from the players to look into their expansion. So not only- And that's a good, that's a big thing. Building goodwill. If I see a company that is like, for instance, Bungie, they actually built goodwill, I would trust and maybe buy more things from their store. Diablo 4. Blizzard builds goodwill to the community and they're going like season three or season four. Sorry, we're on season three now. Season four steps the crap up. And yeah, I might buy their expansion, but right now I have zero plans to buy any Diablo 4 expansions. Like, I got my money's worth out of it, but I don't need to spend more money and hope that, you know, things continue to be worth my money because right now it's not. Only is it good for the players and in their best interest for them to actually have itemization and in-game changes to be good coming into this PTR, but it's also in Blizzard's best interest to fix the core fundamentals of the original game if they expect Absolutely. the consumer base to be willing to hand them even more money on a product that has problems. So honestly, I believe this campfire chat right yeah. here is the most important bit of Diablo information that we will be receiving since the launch of the game. I think this is more important than the BlizzCon announcements where they talked about the Gauntlet leaderboard. I think it's more important than the little art they're doing for the leaderboards yep. and any of the other type of stuff. This is easily the biggest change or announcement since the launch of the game because it's not only going to show what's coming to the game, but it's going to show if players can have hope in the game's development if the so this is essentially their emergency live stream again like they did at the very beginning of, of season one this has got to be the we're gonna we got to bring players back because if we don't well they're gonna go somewhere else itemization releases are very poor people are just going to lose faith entirely and no longer even care about the game but if people look log in and look at it and think Oh, wow. I'm actually surprised at what they were able to accomplish. Maybe they're going to be able to salvage this game after all. Maybe. Then that would be quite important. Like, we all in hope. the worst case scenario where these itemization changes are not good and people spend the time one more time to log in and feel like they got disappointed again, people are going to still feel bad about the purchase. I will they uninstall spend. They're not going to want to buy the expansions or anything like that. They're not going to want to log in for season four. And we're going to have all of that information before season four even arrives because of the public test realm. So this campfire chat here and the public test realm release whenever we actually get that playable is the biggest announcement whatever in diablo 4 in march terms 20th it's the got hope for the best baby since the launch of the game at least in my opinion but i will be flying to la here tomorrow in the morning actually all right well i'm gonna i'm gonna end it there he's going to la link will be uh down below micro transaction uh tv i'm gonna go ahead and give a sub because might be talking more about Diablo 4, and I might have to watch some of his thoughts on it for the channel, of course. But this has been a reaction. I appreciate you guys. Again, I, th I, I, he's right. I don't want Diablo 4 to go into the gutter because I spent eighty dollars on it, and I really want it to be. It's a, it's fun. Like it is definitely meant for casuals, but it's also fun. Like if you want to spend, you know, get to hundred in day one, you you could. People do it. They make it a challenge. You can have whatever fun you want with a game, but at some point it becomes a challenge to try to have fun because the game isn't done right. And that's the problem with seasons. Like if I, I grilled Bungie 
for Destiny seasons being lackluster. Well, Diablo 4 has the same problem. And I know they're free, but if you can't... It, live service is supposed to keep people live in the game. And if you can't do that, that is a you problem, not us problem. And I have no no problem uninstalling the game and never playing it again because, like I said, I got my $80 worth. I beat the story of the campaign, and then I got season uh, two under the belt. I spent hundreds of hours on this game. I'm good. I'm okay with retiring it because there's other games that can keep my interest and my money. And, but a good game shouldn't be trying to get your money f via store. It should get you through investing in the game itself and wanting to play it. And then maybe I will reward you with a little nugget of my time here. Let me buy this because you earned it. I have no problem buying things from stores. I don't think micro microtransactions themselves are devious or in infectious is just the use and the, t the, 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 the context of the microtransaction. When you have no content in the game, but the content is the store itself in the game, that's a problem. And Diablo 4, that's kind of what's going on. It's more efforts going into designing content in the store than actually in the game. Like, I remember sets in Diablo 3, and they were cool, unique sets. Why can't we get cool, unique sets in Diablo 4? Unique armor looks. Why is it that it's... We have the same armor from, like, almost a year ago. Like, can we do something about that? Like, come on. I'm Mr. Gaming Counselor. Hit the like button, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel for more. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. Uh, subscribe. We're almost to 600. I think I'm 573. So we're almost to 600 subs. I have not been pushing for that, so I'm trying to remember to do that now. Thank you. Don't forget to be the best version of yourself. And as always, game out.